Welcome in to the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. We've made it to the finals. Wow. Well, two of us <laughs> have made it to the finals. Uh, week 16 is in the books. We are now on to week 17, the championship game. And as you can tell, it's not just Joe and I in the studio. And that's for a reason. <laughs> Joe did not make it to the championship game. Woo! I got a big old lump of coal in my stocking. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately the semifinal games <laughs> were not too eventful overall. Um, even though I think the, uh, the weekend of football was fun. Mm -hmm. um, how was your guys' uh, holiday weekend of football? It was fun for me. I uh, headed out to my sister's house uh, to get there by kickoff for the Lions game. And uh, eventually we had close to 30 people at my sister's house for Christmas Eve dinner. Wow. Um, but during the Lions game, it was an absolute blast. We were all sitting around the widescreen TV cheering and yelling and having a good time. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So that was uh, Christmas Eve. And then, of course... There are three games on Christmas Day. I watched the first two uh, at my cousin's house for Christmas dinner, and then I tried to make it home in time to catch the big marquee matchup on Christmas night. Yeah. And instead, I wish I would have went to bed early. <laughs> Marie, how was your uh, football watching experience? Or how much football did you watch? I will not lie. I did not watch any football, but that doesn't mean I lost. <laughs> but my football weekend was great. Sure was. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it makes anybody feel good when she comes in and she says, yeah, I didn't watch any of the games. Yeah. I, just, I forgot to set my lineup, I just but happened, I won. Just having to check my lineup and, oh, man. <laughs> hmm. So we'll get into it in a minute. Um, Which matchup you want to start with? I just wanted to mention the Constellations really quick. Okay. Just because I know a couple people cared about them and uh, set their lineups and things. So Malik beat Tracy 97-87. So you can see there's kind of some some low scoring, um, big scoring different differentiation from uh, these teams. Tracy commented uh, yesterday, I think it was, that Malik uh, failed to start uh, two players who yeah. uh, did not play, and he still won the consolation. Game. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. And then uh, Becky beat Sammy 129-108. to so Sammy going from the second seed all the way to potentially seventh place, eighth. He could be the eighth place. Never mind. So uh, I hope he feels okay about that. I know he had a, a brutal loss last weekend, um, but he set his lineup as well. I'm not sure if Becky set hers or or not. I know she put Tyreek Hill back in, but um, yeah. so who knows? But uh, let's get into the the main meat and potatoes. And we'll start with mine, um, since it ended earlier, technically. Um, really, I, I beat Ian 156-82 to 113-38. And uh, this game was over at the 430 Monday game of the Eagles and Giants. Um, I think Devontae Smith, I don't remember, I don't even think Ian took the lead, unfortunately. No, and, and for the longest time, you guys were neck and neck, and then I go to look and see who you have yet to play, and you still had like four players, and I'm yeah. like, oh, it's over. Yeah, and in the Eagles game, unfortunately for Ian, Devontae Smith had a really good game. He had four catches, 79 yards, and a touchdown. Gave him 17.9 points. However, I had Jake Elliott, who absolutely went off as a kicker, giving me 17 points, so basically nullifying what Devontae Smith did. And like I said all week last week, having Christian McCaffrey as your nightcap makes you feel pretty good. And I didn't have to worry about anything. So, yeah, kind of unfortunate. Gravy on your Christmas mashed potatoes. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately for Ian as well, Austin Eckler has kind of been limping into the end of the season here. And James Cook, who had a career week last week, Ooh. put up an absolute dud for the yeah, Bills. Yeah, that was surprising. I think the Bills have been the most frustrating fantasy team. Well, uh, I would go between season. Bills and KC. I mean, KC, you, you're seeing their frustration on the sideline, people throwing helmets, yeah. a lot of bickering, bickering and yelling. Mm -hmm. Bills and Chiefs, I don't know what's happening there. Yeah, like they're winning games, but it's hard to figure out what they're doing. Like they don't help you in fantasy, which yeah. stinks because like James Cook, had a huge week last week, had a good week the week before. You thought, okay, maybe they're going to start to run the ball. 
and then he has a dud in the semifinals. Stefan Diggs has been awful for like the last eight weeks, basically, to end the season. Mm. He uh, ruined Marie's ESPN team, right? Yeah, my uh, other league, he definitely dropped the ball. Yeah, and he, he hurt me in our big league that we had. So the Bills have just been kind of frustrating as far as fantasy goes. Yeah. Um, but I had a huge Thursday night. I started all the Rams again, Stafford, Cup, Nakua. And Cup had a very not-so-great game, but Nakua stepped up and had a huge game. And uh, I had a, what, 66-point lead going into all the Saturday-Sunday games. And when your three main guys are averaging 20 points, um, basically between them, uh, that usually feels good going into the matchup, going into the weekend, so... Cup could have had a bigger game. Uh, he had two drops, uncharacteristic drops. One was at the goal line off his fingertips, and then one was a fade to the back corner yeah. of the end zone that went off his hands. Uh, he could have had a bigger game. I would have won some DraftKings money if he would have <laughs> pulled in either one of those touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, I lost money on those drops, so it was uncharacteristic, but... You did well playing all your Rams players. Mm-hmm. They uh, they are on fire. They seem to have uh, some really great momentum heading uh, heading into the postseason. Yeah, and when we look to next week, they have another good matchup. So I'm excited about that. Um, Ian didn't leave, really leave anything on the bench. Uh, Zay Flowers had 22, but I think he was right in starting Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had a really good matchup. He had a really good game, just didn't get into the end zone. Had 127 rushing yards. Carolina's just an awful defense against the run. Um, just didn't get in the end zone or anything. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, an unfortunate end to his season. But uh, I'll take I'll take the victory. <laughs> and then the reason why Marie is here. Speaking of unfortunate ends. Ugh. So this game came down technically to Monday night. Uh, 49ers and Ravens. And, uh if anybody's wondering, you know, Joe had been, I finally admitted Joe had been right all season long of starting Brock Purdy over Patrick Mahomes. The Niners and have been this is what on fire. They they look like the team that was going to win the Super Bowl over the past month. Uh, they gave me several fantasy wins in a row with uh, Debo and Purdy hooking up and putting up a ton of points. And then... They had their worst. I mean, Purdy had his worst game of his career, mm-hmm. like his short career. It was yeah. brutal. But it, it's I don't know if you, if you saw any of it, but the first drive of the game that uh, Niners had the ball, they looked great. They were marching down the field. They were running. They were passing. And then Purdy throws an interception in the end zone to end that drive, which was on its way to Debo Samuel. And the defender cut in front of Debo for the pick. That game could have started off with a Purdy to Debo touchdown, <laughs> which would have given me double points. Instead, minus three. And then he had three more picks till he got, you know, they say he got hurt and went into the tent, but I think they were like, just sit out the rest of this one. So Sam Darnold comes in mm-hmm. and it's all she wrote. Yep. And he threw another pick. Yeah, luckily I didn't get credit for that. Yeah, so the Baltimore defense really stepped up. Um, And I mentioned it before, Debo Samuel has been known to to be this way where he'll go on these touchdown streaks and look crazy, and then he'll have games like this. And that's why I don't personally like him as a fantasy player. But how can you blame him for this one? Because Purdy looks so awful. Just lost. Their entire team looked like a mess last night. Except for McCaffrey. Yeah, every well, time McCaffrey got the ball, he he just looked like he was the only guy out there trying to win this yeah. game. And we basically said it the last few weeks now that McCaffrey is for sure by far fantasy MVP, number one pick again next year. Oh, I agree. And that's what everybody's going to be fighting for. In my other league, in my ESPN league, I'm facing against Christian McCaffrey, Ooh. so that's going to be brutal. Yeah. But, and they're going to want some revenge next week. After yeah, they this they have not that they have anything to lose. I mean, they've already clinched everything, right? Yeah, they so, they mean, have an easy matchup though next week. Is it? But I, yeah, but I think they have something to prove next week that this was a fluke against yeah. the they, Ravens. Guess who they get next week? Washington, right? Yes. Yeah, they're the 
The yeah. worst defense in the league. Yeah. So we'll see. If McCaffrey does his thing, I'm fine with it. I'll take that in my ESPN league. I just hope that all the rest of my players <laughs> step up. Ugh. Um. Well, the other thing for me, too, is the previous week, I benched uh, jo- rookie Jordan Addison with the Vikings, which was a mistake because he absolutely blew off, blew up, and I was I was lucky to get the win. I learned my my lesson. Put Addison in this week, and he gets injured like in the first quarter, and I didn't even realize anything was wrong until I got a Yahoo notification that said Addison's status was changed from healthy to questionable. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, what just happened? And then I found out he was out. When I lost Addison, I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'm in big trouble. And it just got worse from there. Yeah, and then it it started, the week started off good for you because Kamara had an awful game yeah. against the Rams. And Kyron Williams, he he had a good game, but he didn't get any catches, which was unusual. Mm-hmm. But he did get in the end zone, so he was double uh, what Kamara got on the day. So you started your weekend okay. And then, like, your running backs did their job. Jameer Gibbs had two touchdowns. Oh, he looked fantastic. He's he's going to be a star in this You were this league. correct in going right back to B. John Robinson, even though he scared the living daylights out of everybody yeah. last week. I almost wish he would get traded because <laughs> you can't have a coaching staff bench their star running back because he fumbled. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. You're hurting yourself. Yeah. So they put him back in the following week, and he blows up. So. Yeah, and a lot of people want Arthur Smith to be fired, and me being one of them. But um, unfortunately, Atlanta just kind of keeps winning, and they're just kind of hanging around. So I don't know. Next year's draft, Gibbs, easy top five, right? Uh, oh, I don't know man. if I'm there yet, but depending on where my he's pick getting is. close. He he's getting close. Because I think he's going to be off the board in the first five picks. Um. Uh, he might be a first rounder next year. Yeah. Oh, I I don't even think I'm with a... I'm with Joe on this one. He's gonna go. Yeah. I mean, uh, around here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But... You got the Homer factor, but he just he's looked so great over the past month, like mm-hmm. scoring two touchdowns over the last several games. He had multiple touchdown games. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely a first rounder, and I'm thinking top five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then unfortunately, you mentioned Addison too. Marie got Cortland Sutton knocked out with a concussion before he even did anything on the game. So both of you guys kind of had unfortunate uh, issues there. And then Derrick Henry, he's another one of the most frustrating players, I think, this season. He's had some real big duds, and then he's had his usual Derrick Henry games. He had 88 yards, a rushing touchdown, and a passing touchdown, which we've seen him do a few times. I knew I was in trouble when he (laughs) threw that touchdown pass. I'm like, this is not going to be my weekend. Yeah. Uh, DK Metcalf has continued to uh, finish the season strong, getting a lot of touchdowns. He didn't have the craziest game, but getting in the end zone was a big deal. Who's your your MVP on your roster? Would it be Metcalf? Because he's given you some big games down the stretch. Yeah, it definitely would have to be Metcalf because I I wanted to say it was Travis Kelsey for the longest time just because I wanted to like him. Yeah. But he just didn't end the season well for me, so uh, DK Metcalf is definitely my guy. I would say, I would argue, it's your your mascot of Dak Prescott. (laughs) I do love Dak Prescott. I don't know where she got it from. I don't know why she likes him so much, but he... He had a stretch during that middle part of the season that yeah. just let her cruise to a lot of wins. He put up some stinkers too, though. Yeah. Another another person you got to give credit to is Amari Cooper. He's, I don't know, you know, you yeah. have Flacco come in as quarterback, and now all of a sudden Cooper's like resurgent. Yeah. And fifty one fifty is possible, possibly the single biggest individual point total of the entire season. Yeah, I was trying to. Uh, look that up and I kind of forgot to but um yeah it's one of the big fantasy playoff miracles to have Amari Cooper go off for a Cleveland Browns franchise record yeah 265 yards 11 catches 15 targets and two touchdowns in the fantasy semi yeah Woo! he's 100 been... percent my MVP of the week <laughs> didn't matter about anything else and Joey was worried when we sat down on Monday he was like there's a chance Joe still beats you yeah and I was like even after 51 points and he's yeah. like there's a chance yeah with Purdy and Debo you you just never know 
especially yeah. the way they've been playing. Like they can put up points quickly. So I was a little bit nervous. I was like, that's not that comfortable of a lead. Um, so it was interesting. But uh yeah. You, you also had your kicker uh as like a insurance because yep. I was down about fifty points heading into that game and I and I was like, Well, Purdy and Debo could combine for 50 points, but we also got to factor in Tucker, mm-hmm. who had another monster game. He put yep. up what? Yes. He put up more points. He put up more than Purdy and Debo. <laughs> he did. Yep. Absolutely. Come he on. has been yeah. very solid for me this season in both my leagues, and yeah. I love him. He's yeah. been great. That's why I, he's I think the number he's, one kicker in NFL history. I think he's clinched a Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, yeah. He's, he's been fantastic. 100%. Um, the other nice thing, I guess, Joe, if it's any consolation, uh, I don't think the benches mattered in no, this game. Um, even if Marie chose to not play Amari Cooper, they're like her other options all had good games. Lockett, Gabe Davis. Um, and funny enough, her backup kicker did better than Justin Tucker. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he that's did. right. Miami. Yeah. He was the he leading kicker. Three 50 yard field goals. Oh my gosh. Um, so basically whatever Marie did, she was going to be okay. Obviously if she didn't play Amari Cooper, it would have been a lot closer. Um, so it might've yeah. been a little more exciting, but also maybe a little more disappointing. Well, you know, when you, I sit, you know, like I said, I raced home from Christmas dinner, sat down, got some snacks out to watch the game. And my quarterback is going backwards in points. And at one point he had negative two or whatever. And I'm like, okay. I think that was the first time that I had looked at our score on Monday. And <laughs> I was like, uh, Joe's quarterback is negative two. And Joey was like, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about this game anymore. And I was yeah. like, ooh, that's yeah, going to be rough. It was over early. Yeah, because there, there was a point on uh, Sunday where I kept kind of pointing out like, hey, Amari Cooper got in the end zone. He's having a pretty good game. And then he, like, we went to church for Christmas Eve, and on our way back, he, like, I don't know if that's when he got his other touchdown or we got an alert that he had, like, a 60-yard reception or something like that. And I was like, holy smokes, he's got, like, 150 yards. And then we get back, and he's already at, like, the 250 mark. And I'm like, what is going on in that game? Yeah. And uh, I I was listening to a a fantasy podcast um, earlier in in the day day on monday or something and uh they were talking about like the best lineup you could have had for the fantasy playoffs yeah and it's a combination of like either Derek carr joe flacco amari cooper like all these no-name guys yeah. are have for been the, the fantasy lineup. champions um for this season which is crazy yeah um i feel for you i understand uh losing to basically one player but I was a victim of the Alvin Kamara Christmas Day six touchdown game yeah. a few years back, and uh, that's the most brutal loss I think I've ever had. Yeah, in fantasy. Yeah, that's frustrating when you just see someone go off against you. I remember years ago. I think it might have been the first game of the season years ago. I had Peyton Manning as my quarter quarterback, and he threw for like six touchdowns mm-hmm. in the. We were all watching the. Uh, red zone together and the guy that I was going against was like okay enough yeah and it was just touchdown after touchdown after touchdown mm-hmm. yeah so it happens sometimes and unfortunately at the worst times <laughs> um so that leaves us to the championship matchup husband versus wife mm. got any side bets going on this game uh no just uh bragging rights <laughs> bragging rights and I don't know. You gotta make a way to be bad. We might have to. Because there is there's no love in fantasy football. This is for Oh yeah. All fair in love in fantasy. I'm gonna have to have her sit down and actually watch the red zone with me (laughs) so that we can go over every touchdown. To be fair, I have tried to watch red zone. It goes too fast. I get invested (laughs) in a game and then it switches. So I just get confused. Yeah. So obviously Marie, you are you going to sit Sutton this week? He's still got the big red Q by his name. Uh, I think I'm going to wait a little bit at least because he's got five days to clear the concussion protocol. Mm. So if he does and he's still going to play, there's a chance. Yeah, and he's but the he, chance. He's been <laughs> that guy that worry. somehow always gets into the end zone this season. Mm. Um, well, you got so I don't lots know. of options on your bench if it comes right. down to it. Oh, yeah. You don't necessarily have to hit the waiver wire. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and then you have a really good defensive matchup, Buffalo going up against New England. But mm. I do have San Francisco going up against Washington, which makes me feel pretty good. Yeah. Um, both of our kickers are top-notch kickers in pretty good matchups. Um, our flex position, DK Metcalf and Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is he's going to be questionable for me because he's going up against Cleveland. Their defense has been really good. Jets' offense have been bad. But they just target Garrett Wilson a lot, so that might be a late uh, swap for me. I'm thinking about playing Ezekiel Elliott, which hmm. sounds awful to do in the fantasy championships, but he's been getting a lot of catches. He's going to go up against Buffalo. They're probably going to run the score up. They're going to need to throw it. So depending on hmm. uh, that situation, if Ezekiel Elliott's getting the start again, I might play him. Even though he's projected five points right now, he's going to get more than five points if he plays or if he's the starter. You, your three Rams players are going up against the Giants. That's not too bad. Yeah, which I, I at first, before I knew that they were going up against the Giants, I was thinking about playing Jordan Love against Minnesota uh, just because a divisional game might go to a shootout. But at this point, I think I have to ride with the Rams, like I've been saying. Yeah, go with the hot hand. Yeah. And then uh, I'm a little nervous about Rashad White. Uh, unfortunately, he's going up against New Orleans, who's been a good defense. Rashad White just he's has been so good, I know, though, man. He's, he's been amazing. He scored again this past weekend, yeah. right? He, yeah. He's another guy that just keeps getting into the end zone somehow. Yeah. Um, Likely he's doing his best to fill in um, as the uh, Baltimore tight end. So I, yeah. I don't know if I would tweak your starting lineup. It's yeah. looking pretty solid. Yeah. Like I said, it might just be Wilson that I would, I would change. And then. Uh, with the Rams guys plus McCaffrey, I'm hoping they can carry me to the win. Um, Camara against Tampa Bay is a little bit spooky because I think Tampa Bay might run the the score up a little bit. Um, Derrick Henry against Houston, he struggled. A, he was awful against Houston a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dak Prescott against Detroit. I don't want to root for Dak Prescott against Detroit on Saturday night. Um, I think he'll have an okay game. But um, well, the thing that's scary is that uh, against Minnesota, the Detroit defense gave up 400 yards of yeah. offense. That's not good. Yeah, but they also stopped. They got four picks out of it. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, they obviously they won, so they did what they have to do. But mm -hmm. uh, Prescott could have a big game. Yeah, it, there's definitely potential there. The one thing that I'm happy about though, Amari Cooper, he's playing on Thursday night, so we'll get to see it right away. But he's playing against the Jets, who have a really good passing defense. Mm. Um, I'm a big Joe Flacco fan, so I want him to keep doing well. But uh, if he can do that without throwing it to Amari Cooper, I'd be happy about that. You know, let's talk about Flacco. I mean, for this guy, I mean, when was the last time he played a foot NFL football game? It's uh, been a few years. He played right? well. He played for the Jets. Did he play last year for the Jets? Did he played he? like a couple games or something just as a fill-in. Wow. Um, but he's been in and out of the league the last couple of years. He thought about retiring at one point. Yeah. Um, but for him to, to come in like off his sofa basically and yeah. play as well as he's, he's been playing. He's got a really – like crazy. my brother and I were talking about this for a while. And uh, even Malik and I went uh, back and forth because Malik's not a believer in Joe Flacco. But not, he's starting to get there. Man. But uh, my brother and I were talking about, like, he still throws a really pretty deep ball. He does. And it's just and like. Cooper couldn't have had the game he had without Flacco getting him the ball. Yeah. So it it would be cool if, uh, Cle like, I hate Cleveland with a passion. <laughs> we all do. But, They're well, Joe doesn't. Losers. Joe like, doesn't. All right, Joe. We're, we're going to talk after. Let me, here's the deal. So Cleveland and Detroit, you know. They've been lovable losers for a long, long time. And then there was a bit of a stretch where Cleveland kind of got good. They were playing well for a while. And the reason I, I supported them is because I said, look, if they can do it, we can do it. But we so, can do it better. Well, now <laughs> we're doing it better. But there was a long stretch where the Lions weren't. So I felt that Cleveland showed that even the lovable losers can turn things around. Now Detroit is finally doing it. Yeah. So right now, I'm projected the winner, which uh, is a good start. 124 to 121. Ooh, it's tight. Um, but I assume it's going to be close. Um, like I said, Marie does have one person going on Thursday with Amari Cooper. I have Garrett Wilson. So that's a good comparison there if I stick with Garrett Wilson. Um, the other thing that I'm happy about, too, Travis Kelsey's projected 17 points against Cincinnati. He's looked bad. He's been horrible. Recently. 
and it's really disappointing to have him. I don't know if this was true or not, but there was a rumor going around that he was supposed to propose after the uh, most recent Kansas City game, and you got to wonder, is that weighing heavily on his mind? Like, is he distracted with all this, you know? Well, in the beginning of the whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey love was every time she's at a game, he plays better. Right. Well, lately, every time she's been at a game, he's been okay. He's yeah. had seven points last week against New England, nine points this week against Vegas. He does get a really good defensive matchup next week. Cincinnati's awful against the tight end. Mm. Patrick Mahomes keeps getting more and more whiny each week. Yeah. Um, so he maybe always has been whiny. Uh, it's just now showing. She's a big hater of Patrick Mahomes. I am. I'm well, not a Patrick just, Mahomes fan, but I love all, me some Travis Kelsey. Yeah, we, we had the Chiefs game on during uh, Christmas Day dinner, and we were all looking at Mahomes going, something looks off. Like, he just looked stressed mm-hmm. and emotional and – I agree. Just something's not right. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been have been pointing out that his frustrations getting uh, almost in the way now. Yeah, where at first it was like okay, he's trying to rally the troops, and now it's it's kind of gone over the top. So yeah, who knows about Kansas City? But um, yeah. Well, hopefully he'll pull it together this week, and uh, Travis Kelsey can help lead my team to victory. <laughs> mm, I'm feeling pretty confident. To be honest, oh, I wish I could. You know I'm what happened last watch. time you were confident? Yeah, I know <laughs> I, it happens a you lot. You lost, <laughs> but um, like I said, I'm in two fantasy championships this weekend. So if I'm to win one, I would rather win the ESPN one because there's there's money on the line. Yeah, um, but technically, I do have a hundred dollars locked in for getting second place in that league. But okay. um, there's a 450 for first place. Ooh. So that would that would feel nice if I could yeah. get to that. Yeah, that's my that's the one thing I can come away with with this ONTV league is there's no money on the line, yeah. but there's still pride. And that's what I said. I like that this is a league that it doesn't need to be money and we're all competitive enough yeah. that uh, it doesn't really matter. And at the end of the day, like, uh, well, at the end of this weekend, two of us might not be talking to each other for a day or two <laughs> just to get it over with. And I can think of at least one uh, team owner who might not get invited back next week. <laughs> so hopefully um, hopefully it's a good matchup. That's that's all I hope for. Hopefully we don't have any big blow-ups. Hopefully it comes down to the wire, makes it fun, makes it interesting. Um, I know Ian checked into the, the Yahoo chat this weekend, said congratulations to everybody. Yeah. Um, so hopefully Ian will set his lineup because I do think your third place matchup is is still kind of important. Get on the podium, um, so hopefully um, that'll be fun. And um, yeah, no waiver wire stuff. I mean, if you if you want to, go for it. Drop your team. Put in <laughs> the bench guys. Um, yeah, same to you. Let's. That's, uh, that's fine. Let's go for it. You know all those changes you're talking about making. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go for funsies. Maybe I'll do it for bragging. Even more bragging rights. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, probably, I mean, next week we'll do like a, a full recap. And then I, I want to do like a special where a group of us come back or maybe we go back into the studio, yeah. do some sort of like, I want to I want to do like an award show or something. Well, that's I think thing. that would be fun. Uh, Ian is in possession of the trophy, which he brought with him on draft day. So we're going to have to pry that out of his hands and maybe we'll do a little trophy presentation next week. We'll see. Yeah. We're trying to figure out something, something fun. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, week 17. Those were all the marbles. Went by fast. It was fun. Yeah. It did. I've had so much more fun than I thought I would. (laughs) I guess I'll say good luck. Nope. Hope you lose. (laughs) (laughs) uh, With love. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week for the recap of the championship game.